For many people, the name Switzerland conjures up images of chocolate, watches, and of course cheese. Of the latter, the distinctively old Emmental variety being famous the world over. However, the beautiful Emmental region, situated at the heart of Canton Bern, has many other attractions, and its rolling countryside is fertile and lovingly tended. Distinctive farmhouses and outbuildings are surrounded by both arable and pasture land, while the towns of the region prove a mecca for tourists, as well as supporting flourishing industries important to the local economy. International trade has always been vital to Switzerland, and good communications are essential for the country's prosperity. The railways came early to Canton Bern, and today there's a flourishing network covering the entire region, with the Swiss Federal Railway happily coexisting alongside a variety of private companies. The Emmental region has its own railway, the Emmental Bahnen, the third largest private railway company in Switzerland. This group is an amalgamation of three long-established organizations, the Solothurn Moutier Railway, the Emmental Railway, and the Vereinigte Hutville Railways, which joined forces in 1944 and today work under a common management. Their lines intersect with the SBB at many stations, and the ease of access this affords means that the tracks are well used for both passenger and goods traffic, with freight making up a large element of the EBT's business. Our journey from Moutier to Thun will span the first two of these groups, the SMB and EBT, taking us from the mountains of the Jura region to Lake Thun in the Bernese Oberland. Moutier lies in the north of the mountain chain running the length of western Switzerland, the wooded slopes of which form a dramatic backdrop to the farming landscape of the valley floor. Moutier station is actually the property of the Swiss Federal Railways, for the route between Baal and Biel, which runs through here, was opened in 1875, over 30 years before the SMB was formed. The signs on the station are dual language, for although Moutier is in French-speaking Switzerland, our destination lies in the German-speaking region. The SMB company originally ran with steam, and three ED34 locomotives were bought in 1908 for the opening of the line. In 1911, an EC45 locomotive, number 11, was added to the fleet. However, these were all replaced when electrification of the line took place in the 1930s. Two of the steam locomotives have survived, and Loco 11, after a thorough overhaul at Meiningen in Germany, is now based at Burgdorf, while Loco 2 is currently under restoration at Hutville. Our journey along the SMB line will be in one of the first series of RBDE 44 motor baggage cars, purchased by the EBT Group in the 1970s. The track from Moutier to Solothurn winds its way along the Grand Val Valley to Gensbrunnen before passing through the Weisenstein Tunnel. It then makes a large loop down the side of the Aare Valley before reaching its destination at Solothurn. Building began in 1903, but the official opening of the line could not take place until Monday the 3rd of August 1908, the length of time taken for construction being largely due to the major work required to build the tunnel. The line climbs steadily as it runs along the northern side of the valley. The entire EBT network is worked by adhesion, as the gradients of up to 1 in 40 do not merit rack working.
The viaduct at Corcelles is a graceful stone structure which carries the track for 96 meters over the valley floor in a 260 meter radius curve. Immediately after Gensbrunnen, the line plunges into the Weisenstein Tunnel, which takes the track right through the heart of the mountain chain. At 3,698 meters, this is the longest tunnel on the entire EBT network and was a major feat of engineering. Construction began on New Year's Day, 1904, but due to major problems with the geology of the northern end of the bore, the breakthrough wasn't achieved until over two and a half years later, with the join being made less than 300 metres from the northern portal. Oberdorf station at the southern entrance of the tunnel is the starting point of a scenic diversion to the top of the mountain by chairlift. Unlike the forward-facing chairs normally found in Switzerland today, the Weisenstein lift has retained the traditional sideways seats, giving passengers a panoramic view of the Yare Valley. And from the summit of the mountain, the horizon is filled with a truly wonderful view of the Swiss Alpine chain. Our way is now downhill, and in order to lose enough height, we must make the large loop along the valley side. The embankment which supports the curve at the end of the loop was constructed with the spoil from the Weisenstein Tunnel. The Geisloch Viaduct is today largely hidden by trees although at the time of its construction, its stone pillars, arches and steel girders were clearly visible. At 186 metres, it's the longest bridge on this line, carrying the track 23 metres above the valley floor in a 300 metre radius curve. Just outside Solothurn, our track joins the main line running along the RA Valley between Olten and Beale.
Approaching the station, the line crosses the River Aare, one of Switzerland's major waterways, which flows north from the Bernese Oberland through Bern and western Switzerland before joining the River Rhine. At Solothurn, our train ends its journey, but before making the connection to Thun, it would be a pity to miss the opportunity to visit the picturesque old town. Solothurn, once a Roman settlement, is one of the oldest towns north of the Alps. Here in AD 303, two members of the Theban Legion were martyred for their faith and are today known as Saints Victor and Ursus, after whom the cathedral is dedicated. It became a fortified city in late medieval times, noted as being a recruitment center for Swiss mercenary soldiers. The sturdy walls, however, conceal an elegant city, once the residence of the French ambassadors to Switzerland. Solothurn station is a busy junction and home to three different railway companies. The station is owned by the SBB, with the Emmental Railways having running rights. The RBS, whose meter gauge trains run a shuttle service between Bern and Solothurn, have their own dedicated area on the southern side of the station. We're now at the start of the EBT section of the line, which will take us from Solothurn through Burgdorf down to Langnau and Thun. The first part of our route, from Solothurn to Burgdorf, runs along the original section of track opened by the Emmentalbahn, or EB, in 1875. The two towns at each end already had rail connections to other regions of Switzerland, and the Emmental Railway adopted the standard gauge mandatory in Switzerland at the time, facilitating easy interchange of stock. Just before Biberisht, we cross the river Emma, source of water for the large paper mill, which has been here since 1865. This is one of the EBT's major customers, with its own sidings running directly into the factory complex. The firm even has its own colorful shunter, which is kept busy ferrying materials around the site. Before the coming of the Emmental Railway, it was served by a horse-drawn train, which passed down the Emma Valley to Derendingen, and on to Solothurn. The sidings at Gerlefingen connect another important customer of the railways, the Von Roll Steel Complex. 
640,000 tons of freight pass over the tracks to and from here every year. Vileth Station is an airy glass and steel structure, one of the most modern on the line after being completely rebuilt in 1989. This is a scheduled passing place as the line between Solothurn and Burgdorf is largely single track. Trains run frequently along the line and the EBT prides itself on providing a speedy and efficient service. The group is an important employer locally and has around 650 staff on its workforce. Castle Landshut, nestling in its tree-filled park close to the railway, is a handsome structure dating back to the 17th century. It's the only moated castle to be found in this area of Switzerland, and the park is a place of tranquility. The castle has been the property of Canton Bern for many years, and today houses a museum of hunting. Our train speeds across the motorway which links Baal to Bern and is one of the major highways of western Switzerland. Bergdorf was the end of the line for the first six years of the Emmental Railway's existence. And the lovely old town has many attractions to tempt us to take a short break from our journey. The station here is a modern structure, unlike the ancient castle standing on a rock outcrop high above the River Emma. The hill has been fortified since the 10th century although the present castle was built by the Dukes of Zeringen in 1127.
The town below has remained largely unspoiled and is today a car-free zone, providing the perfect place for a leisurely stroll. Its cobbled streets are in character with the surrounding buildings and are kept in a good state of repair by craftsmen proud to be able to practice their traditional skills. The old corn house, dating from 1770, has been skillfully adapted as a museum and cultural center for a variety of musical activities. Swiss musicians can extol their art in sympathetic surroundings, adding an extra dimension to the displays of folk instruments housed in this beautiful old building. While a variety of Swiss music is readily available on compact disc, earlier methods of recording can be seen here, for the museum houses one of the largest collections of phonographs and gramophones in Europe. There are examples from all over the world, dating from the earliest 19th century phonographs. Burgdorf was once the home of the Lenko Gramophone and Hi-Fi Manufacturing Company, and the core of the collection was made by a former employee. The collection includes some rare Swiss examples in a variety of disguises. The first railway to pass through Burgdorf was the Olten to Bern line, which opened in 1857. Today, the station is owned by the SBB. This is one of six points along our route where the SBB and EBT intersect, and the tracks are constantly busy, with trains arriving and departing every few minutes. The line from Solothurn to Burgdorf proved so successful that in 1881, the EB extended their tracks to Hasle Ryugsau and Langnau. The Swiss railways are noted for their punctuality, and the EBT is no exception, so we pull out dead on time. Our train has made a reversal at Burgdorf, a process greatly simplified by the modern push-pull sets used on the EBT today. This is also a changing point for drivers, and we have a new pair of hands at the controls. The route from Solothurn to Thun was originally constructed as single track, except in passing places and stations. However, Work has begun on a second line along certain sections of the network, and double running can now take place between Burgdorf Steinhof and Hasle Rieksau.
The depot at Oberburg was built between 1973 and 1975 and is the main workshop of the EBT, repairing locomotives and rolling stock for the whole group. At Hasle Ryugzau, the tracks divide and we take the line up the valley of the river Emma to the market town of Lagnau. We've changed trains onto the local shuttle for this part of the journey and the line is well used by commuters working in Burgdorf and Bern as well as local travellers. This valley was the home of the 19th century Swiss novelist Jeremias Gotthelf the stories of Emmental life give a fascinating glimpse into the culture and customs of the period. Romsai is the junction between the EBT and VHB branches of the group, and trains are timed to connect here. Just outside Langnau, our track merges with the SBB main line between Luzern and Bern. These last few kilometers are owned by the SBB, although EBT trains have running rights. The station at Langnau is also SBB property, being established in 1864, 17 years before the arrival of the Emmental Bahn. The EB line between Burgdorf and Langnau proved so successful that within a decade a new company, the BTB, was formed to connect Burgdorf with Thun in the Bernese Oberland. This was a forward-thinking organization and decided to use the new electric traction to haul their trains, commissioning SLM and Brown Bovary to produce some of the first electric locomotives to run in the whole of Europe. These were three-phase machines, taking their power through the wheels from the track and from two overhead contact wires via their twin collectors. Speed control was a major problem, and as with most early three-phase machines, only two speeds were available, 18 or 36 kilometers per hour. They were augmented by three-phase rail cars and CE44 locomotives, the latter looking at first sight like a prototype for the famous SBB crocodile. When the Emmental Bahn electrified their line between Solothurn and Langnau in the early 1930s, the BTB converted to the standard single-phase 15,000 volt system, and both companies bought BE44 locomotives and BDE24 motor baggage cars, the latter now completely modified. Both types are still in regular use. In the 1960s, the EBT group updated the fleet, purchasing BDE44 motor baggage cars augmented by five RE44 locomotives, mainly used for goods traffic. 
two RE456 locomotives are the latest acquisitions of the group, being brought into service in 1993. These state-of-the-art machines built by SLM with electrical apparatus by Assayer Brown Bovary were specially designed by the Swiss graphic artist Colani. They bring the EBT back full circle as their three-phase machines, utilizing the latest frequency converter technology. We now take the line of the old BTB company running from Harsley down to the lakeside town of Thun. The EB and BTB companies merged in 1942. The line from Harsley runs along the Bicklebach Valley through lush farming country, passing the large Emmental farmhouses with their flower-decked windows and huge roofs. The modern push-pull train in which we're making this leg of our journey is one of the 13 RBDE44 second series sets purchased by the group in the 1980s. These are capable of reaching speeds of up to 125 km per hour, although the smoothness of the ride gives little indication of this.
Our train makes a final push to reach the summit of the line at almost 767 meters above sea level. The track having gained over 230 meters in height since Burgdorf. We pass quickly through one of the few tunnels on this part of the system before entering the station at Großhochstetten. This station is the destination of an older member of the EBT fleet. For while the BTB line always ran with electric traction, the EB railway company used steam for the first 50 years of its existence. The original locomotives on the EB line were ED33 engines, and four of these were purchased from SLM between 1875 and 1881. The expansion link of their Valvschatz valve gear is situated directly below the cab, necessitating unusually long reach rods to transfer the valve gear motion to the front of the engine. Today, number three is enjoying a much deserved retirement at the Swiss Transport Museum in Luzerne. The stable was augmented by two ED22 locomotives purchased when the EB extended their line to Langnau. A quarter of a century later, two more powerful ED45 locomotives were acquired. Loco number no. 8 was added in 1914 and has survived her sisters, today being the treasured possession of the Bern Steam Railway Club, who make sure she's kept in pristine condition. This superheated 54-ton machine was manufactured by SLM and has a maximum speed of 60 kilometers per hour. Her boiler working pressure is 180 pounds per square inch. She has a coal capacity of only one and a half tons, as her intended runs were very short. This handsome locomotive is much in demand for special outings and weddings, and is in steam most weekends during the summer, manned by volunteers, with an EBT staff member acting as pilot. Großhochstetten is the highest station on the line, so the track is now downhill all the way to journey's end at Thun.
we sweep round the large curve to join the Kisei River Valley, a tributary of the Are. At Knolfingen station, we make another connection with the Swiss Federal Railway, the same Luzern to Bern line which we met at Langnau. This station is again owned by the SBB, whose staff control the modern computerized signaling system for both companies. The electrical supply for all the locomotives in the station area is the responsibility of the SBB, so our driver must isolate the train while we change back to the EBT-powered catenary. On the outskirts of Thun, the mountains of the Bernese Oberland provide a striking background to the urban development alongside the track. Thun is the terminus of the EBT line and the end of our journey. The station is owned by the SBB, but is also heavily used by the Bern Lodzberg Samplon company, and there's always something for the railway enthusiast to spot. There's been a settlement here from Celtic times, although the impressive hilltop castle is, like that at Burgdorf, the creation of the Dukes of Zeringen at the end of the 12th century. Following their demise, it passed to the Counts of Kieburg, before being acquired by the Counts of Bern in 1384. It still dominates the town, although its sheer walls and fortifications are now a tourist attraction rather than a symbol of oppression. The town grew up on the banks of the river Are, and a waterside view is never far away. Many famous people have stayed in Thun over the years, including Brahms, who composed several sonatas during his visits here.
The beauties of the Bernese Oberland attract large numbers of tourists every year to this region, and a delightful way to view the spectacular mountain scenery is from one of the many boats which ply along the lake between Thun and Interlaken. The landing stage, just a short step away from the station, is always busy, and there's no shortage of craft to take us on our cruise. The fleet, owned by the Bern Lochberg Samplon Railway Company, today is almost exclusively composed of motor ships, replacing the original paddle steamers. Some modern craft retain the names of earlier vessels. The pride of the lake, however, is the paddle steamer Blumlesalp, which first plied these waters in 1906. She was taken out of service in the early 1970s and rescued by a dedicated band of enthusiasts who were determined this last lake steamer should not be broken up. After more than 20 years restoration, she's now once more back in steam to delight all lovers of navigation. From the heights of the Jura to the splendors of the Bernese Oberland, the EBT carries you in comfort and style along the delightful Emmental Railway. <laughs> 